and we will begin with a word of prayer. Now, Father, I, I don't understand this kingship thing because I've never been into royalty. And really, I just don't understand it. But I know who my leader is. I know who it is that I follow. And I pray that all of us who are followers of Jesus will hold him in our hearts and in our minds and do all that we can to further the gospel. This I pray and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, Amen. okay last week, that is the last time we got together, we found that Jesus was anointed, remember? Okay, Mary anointed his head with oil. That is preliminary to today, okay? Pick your gospel. Who would like the gospel of Mark? I'll do that one. Okay, gospel of Matthew. By the way, John is the shortest one. <laughs> gospel of Matthew? I'll, I'll do it. Okay, gospel of Luke? I'll do Luke. Okay, then that leaves John. Well, no, I say John, I'll take it. Okay, we're going to start with... When is it? This is Sunday afternoon, April 2nd, 30 AD. Okay, and we'll know it by another name once we get started because of the palm branches. Okay, but we know it's Sunday. Okay, we'll start with Luke chapter 19, verses 28 through 34. And when he had said these things, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. When he drew near to Bethphage and Bethany, at the mount that is called Olivet, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village in front of you, where on entering you will find a colt tied, on which no one has ever yet sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you untying it? You shall say this, The Lord has need of it. So those who were sent away and found it, just as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owners said to them, Why are you untying the colt? <laughs> and they said, The Lord has need of it. Okay. What do you hear? What do you see? What do you find? This leaves me with a lot of questions. Good. Questions um, are always wonderful things. Yeah. Because uh, there's a lot of things we don't know. Did Jesus make these arrangements ahead of time or someone on his behalf? Mm -hmm. um, is it just strictly the work of the Holy Spirit? Uh, the actual words that were used seem to, that, that the owner used seem to line up with the words that Jesus said he was going to use. Perfectly. There's pre she saw yeah. ahead what would happen, yeah. right? Or, or, or the author later. Uh, okay. Decided well, yeah. that those must you have an authors. author. No, yes. Forget this part. Yeah. Okay, good. But, but there, how it actually all happened is, okay. is the... All right. All right, we'll, we'll try to deal with that because we have sources to deal with that. What else do you see? Well, one of the things that always intrigued me is if it's a cult that's never... Say, say again. I'm sorry. What intrigues me is if you have an animal that's not been... Uh, in this case, a colt that has not been broken. <laughs> how is he going to sit on it? Because this animal is going to, yeah, it's going to resist. Disneyland, yeah. Yeah, and I found that very interesting. Okay, good. Well, there'll be an explanation maybe somewhere. What else do you see? Well, I guess growing up on a farm, for me personally, uh, one of the things is the owner saying, you know, what, the, what are you doing <laughs> on time? My I told. Am. Yeah. Where are you, you know, what's happening? Where are you going? Yeah. I don't want you to steal something that is mine. Good, You good. know, and I mean, not having a clue what's going on. Okay, good. Anything else? There's a lot. There's a lot here. Well, just something that I'm guessing will come up later. There's only one animal in this story. Yeah, we'll leave it at that for the moment. Okay. So what? There apparently, Jesus is coming along to this place, and he says, "You two go up there, untie the colt, and if anybody asks you, just tell them the Lord has need of them." Right? The Lord, meaning. The guy in charge, not necessarily Jesus. The person who owns it, it sounds like. It's the Lord. 
Now, if you were in England, the Lord might have a different meaning. The Lord would have a different meaning. <laughs> Back to royalty. Okay. So, what we're going to ask is a number of questions. There's a couple of disciples. We don't know who, are, who they are. They're near a mountain called Olivet. Okay. Near Bethphage and Bethany. These are little, little villages. Okay. No one has ever sat on this thing. This little thing is going to just buck like heck. It's just not going to want that. But there's got to be a reason why they mention it's never had anybody sit on it. It's a virgin cult. <laughs> Meaning it's never been ridden. Okay? Sorry, can't help it. Um, and it'll be tied there waiting for you. How does Jesus know that it's there? Did he arrange it? Is it just knowledge that he has because of his spirituality? Is it the Holy Spirit? Okay, then sure enough, the exact words are used. They go up there and they say, the Lord has need of it. And that's the answer why we're taking your call. Okay, anything else? Because things change. Here we go. Mark chapter 11, verses 1 through 6. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this. The Lord needs it and will send it back immediately. Oh, that's nice. We didn't have that before, did we? No, we didn't. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside of the street. And they, as they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Okay, what do we do? What's different now? Well, I don't remember it saying in the previous verses that it was just some people out there that said that. By was, bystanders. It wasn't the owner. Yeah. It was people around saying, hey, whoa, we're in a small village. We know you don't, You're that's not, not your cult. Yeah. And yeah. so the phrase, the Lord has need of it, could make sense then. Yeah. But okay. I think but. he added, and immediately he will send it back here. That's sweet. You know, it's nice. He's going to borrow it and bring it back. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's really good to know. Jesus. So neighbors were looking out for a neighbor. Yeah, it was neighborhood watch. <laughs> yeah, in those days, you had to have that. Yeah. So just as they entered this village, next to a door, there's a colt tied. And the bystanders are watching these two guys come up and untying the colt. And they explain, well, what's happening? It says, the Lord has needed. Now that sort of makes better sense now. It could have meant the person who owned the cult, the cult has need of it, or something along that line. Question, thought, or comment? Well, it just, uh, uh, in my mind, the fact that it would be returned, well, we know what Jesus was going to use it for, so of course he'd have no need after that. He never did have another need after that, we yeah. found out. But that's later. But, well, but, but the whole thing is... Uh, I think it's interesting that if someone went to my neighbor's house, let's say, for example, the neighbor were away and I were watching his house, as an mm -hmm. example, I would be extremely reluctant to let anybody take anything. Well, they just came for the boat because the master needs the boat. Yeah. Yeah, they're going to haul off their boat. Mm -hmm. Neighbors should look out for neighbors, shouldn't they? Yeah. Yeah. I would still be hesitant because it's a vague statement. Yeah. Although we don't, we don't know how much the Holy Spirit entered into this. That's very true. We, have, we don't know what the deal is. Or it may have been prearranged. Or it may have been prearranged. And they're simply saying, well, the Master knows about it. We're going to take it to the Lord. Mm -hmm. So, anything else strike you here? Well, we don't know how far they went to go into the village. We don't know what village. Actually, we do. do we? We'll get to that. At the moment, you can't see that. You have to know the geography. 
but I'll get into that. For okay. You. So we'll be there. Matthew 21, 1 through 5. I got that. I think you got that. When they had come near Jerusalem and reached Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, to your, ki look your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt of a foal of a donkey. Okay. Wow. Now you have something different. Right. Mm -hmm. What has happened now? What has Matthew got? He's got two pronouns. He's got a he pronoun and a she pronoun. Okay. Which means there are probably two individuals. Could be. A he and a she in those days meant two individuals. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So it would seem that there is a donkey and her colt. Mm -hmm. A foal. Something like that. Whatever they want to call them. I don't know that. So there are two animals uses you know untie them bring them the lord has need of them he will send them matthew suddenly has two animals and as you remember as you've all seen it somewhere before it's a weird thought that jesus is trying to ride two animals at the same time no i don't think so i think he knows that this little colt won't move without his mother and Good. so when riding the donkey, the colt has to come along. Excellent. But he's going to ride the colt, right? Well, that's what we are that's told. That's what we're told in the other two. Yeah. Okay. But this, I think, clarifies really what's going to happen. Okay, good. I wish all the painters were right, because they only show one animal. Every <laughs> one of them is on one. There is no mom there to calm the colt. Okay. But I remember way back when I was really young, there was a controversy about whether how we could sit on two animals at the same time. It was bizarre. Very wide. Either that or you're standing like they do. Yeah, or a plank circus. between them or something. I don't know. It was <laughs> difficult thinking. So, but what we have is someone who's added something else. Matthew's adding it, but he's adding it for a reason. Okay? It's as though he doesn't seem to understand it for some reason. I don't know, because look how he ends it. It's a quote. Behold, your king is coming to you, gentle and mounted on a donkey, and on the colt of the donkey. That's this one, this particular translation, everybody has tried to modify these, okay? But the Greek, you can't modify it. It says, and, them, them, them. Okay? So he's not going to sit on them, but he has to have a them because of the original quote that he's quoting. So I once read that to prove the Bible historical, mm -hmm. one of the things that you do is you look and see if there's anything that is not necessary in that text. Yes. Because texts that are, that are artificially written, they only bother to tell you the things that are pertinent to the story. Texts that are written uh, as people saw them include all kinds of things that, does it matter? No. Maybe yeah. not. It just, I, you know, it's like the, the mother donkey. What is, what would be a... Well, would they we, could just call it a donkey, but that would be a, a jenny. A jenny, okay. The jenny needs to be there, as you're suggesting, to keep the colt calm. You know, if he's going to write on the colt that has never been written on before, the Jenny is going to be there to keep it calm. And that makes sense. So all the painters were wrong, all the pictures are wrong, and there should be two donkeys. Correct? Well, That's the understanding. We're, we're also making an assumption that the colt was, has grown large enough for someone to ride on. That is an assumption we have to have, yes. Yeah. Yes. All I say is, it's interesting to see. Or Matthew didn't understand about 
and uh, yeah. Hebrew parallelism in poetry. I would say Matthew had an issue with this particular text, trying to show you that this is the fulfillment of a prophecy. He seems to have misunderstood it slightly. Whatever. Anything else you see here? On Sunday afternoon, the first day of the week, Jesus walked ahead of his disciples westward from Bethany on the road to Jerusalem. He's coming from Bethany. This is where Lazarus, Mary, Martha, and all that. And he's on the road coming this way. And as you can see, that's not a big distance. There's a mile right there. Okay? So it's a couple miles to get into Jerusalem. So they're walking along this road here, and as it turns slightly to the north, a branch, there's a little hill on this side in between there, comes off and you have to go around it to go up to Bethphage, which is up on the hills here. So stop, wait here, and send two disciples up to Bethphage. Any question about it? Well, the only thing that's uh, just popped out to me is uh, also uh, Old Testament scripture saying that uh, God is going to come from the east. And oh, when you look at this picture, of course, he's coming from the east. Interesting. Okay. Anyway, we'll go on with other stuff. But this is the, this is the hill called Olivet. Uh, Olivet. Okay, it's the Mount of Olives. It's three peaks, it's three lumpy areas. And you have hilltops, or whatever you call it. But it's only one hill. Okay? So he's walking around the southern edge of the hill. And he gets to right here, and he goes, Ah, you two, I want you to head up into the village of Bethphage. Okay, let me see. Um, Soon he came to a place where a side road led, up, led to the north up a valley cutting into the south side of the Mount of Olives. Up this valley was the village of Bethphage. Any question? What? Thought? Yeah. Well, okay. we, know, we know where it was. Now, yeah, we do know where it was. At the crossroads, Jesus stopped. He sent two disciples up the valley and into the village. This is it today. With instructions to bring back a young donkey that they would find there. The road comes up here. You can see it right here. This is going up the valley. This is the village today of where Bethphage was. Okay? And that over there is Jerusalem area. And here's the next hill over here. And here's a hill over here. Okay? The buildings are totally different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the laundry. Laundry, <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, anything? Here we go. Following his directions, they entered the village, found the donkey, untied it, assured those nearby that they were not stealing it, telling them that Jesus had sent them, and then they brought it back to where Jesus sat. Now, Bethphage is up here in the upper right, uh, in the center right. The road comes down here and stops right there and intersects with this, that road heading into Jerusalem. This is the road he walked. So Jesus would have sat probably somewhere right about here. As he sent his two disciples up this road to Bethphage. Okay? They didn't have so many cars in those days either. I wonder if the people that own that parking lot know Jesus sat there. I doubt it. <laughs> okay, but the probability is he would, he would have sat here waiting for them, sending them up the road here to Bethphage. Now they brought this donkey back. John chapter 12, 12 through 15. The next day the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king, 
king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. Uh, let's, let's, let's stop there. Okay, so, sitting on a donkey's colt. Okay, we'll, we'll look at the, at the uh, text for that in a minute. Anything you see here. Well, are, now, we, are, are we going to talk about the uh, symbolism of the colt? Sure. Okay. Go ahead. No, start us off. Well, it's just, as my understanding, a real king would ride in on a horse or possibly even a camel or some large animal, mm -hmm. some mm -hmm. fearsome animal. Oh, yes. Because a, a war thing. And to ride in on a colt, as my understanding, is uh, a lowly, that's a farmer's tool. Sure. He's, here's a lowly king. It sounds weird, but I understand what you mean. Yeah. You know, and we are going to have to deal with this. It, it will come. It comes up right away. Okay, so John, this is it. He has this quick summary of this whole thing. And you see that there are palm trees, branches, um, and shouting, Hosanna. Bless you, come in the name of the Lord. The king of Israel riding a young donkey, set on it. Okay, and here we go. Any question before we move on? Anything strike you here? I can imagine that uh, without mom, that donkey would have been uncontrollable with the crowd, of course. <laughs> I would think he would freak out and go stun. I ain't going to move. <laughs> Other disciples were already walking ahead of them toward Jerusalem to spread word that the Messiah was on his way. Jesus stopped. And I'll explain this part in a minute. He sends two disciples up to Bethphage to get a donkey. That's a reason. And he sends a couple other disciples or so up into the town to let them know that he's coming. This is an orchestrated PR campaign. Pardoning the expression, of course. Thoughts before we go on? You'll see how it works out. Zechariah 9.9 reads, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout in triumph, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and endowed with salvation, humble and mounted on a donkey, even a colt, the foal of a donkey. Okay? You have to tell the people he's coming. They need to know. So he sent some disciples ahead, in my opinion, to let everybody know that he's coming. Well, I would assume in Jerusalem, everyone would know the contents of Zechariah. I would assume many or, of them a, do. A majority of people. Yeah. yeah, I would think so. They're really looking forward to the Messiah getting rid of the Romans. Mm -hmm. And being on the donkey as opposed to the militaristic horse. That is that less happened. likely to be known. But still, in this prophecy, right, right. it was going to be a donkey. The donkey. A colt of a donkey. Good. That's true. We're going to understand because most people think of it as, oh, he was riding a donkey. He's so humble. No, he's not. As I'll show you in a few moments. There was one of the, was it David or Solomon? That came, David. It was David that came in on a donkey. No, David's turned it over to Solomon that way. I'll show you that. Let's go to Mark chapter 11, verses 7 through 10. Okay, I've got that. Okay. <clears throat> then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Good. Excellent. What do you see? We've now pro progressed the story. Jesus is on the colt, and they're actually moving into Jerusalem. Well, they're rolling out the red carpet, so to speak. Red carpet. That's an interesting Well, that, that, that's, our, that's our common... That's how you honor someone in our society, right? You roll out a red carpet yeah, for them to walk on. Yeah, it's to roll it back up so it doesn't have to be cleaned. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but, but in this case, they're putting whatever on the road 
to, so the donkey doesn't have to walk in the dirt. Well, I can understand putting down branches. I'm not sure I want to throw my cloak down under the hoofs of a donkey. And especially with the donkey also would maybe leave a little bit like, you know, never mind. So, uh, but they do. Why do they do that? This is the king. The king is due honor. Who is doing this? Many. Who is putting down this? Many. Many some are disciples, maybe some of the other followers in outer Jerusalem. But those no. people who oppose the Romans, no doubt, is who they are. Those people who were aligned enough to be aware of what it means that the Messiah is coming, they are. I agree with that. Please remember, people don't change much over the years, in my opinion. A few thousand years, we're still the same. Most people are just going to go about their business. They don't care about this at all. They, they, they're not learned. I don't think, I think most people just get along. Well, there's going to be some people that are coming to see what all the noise is about. Correct. And there will always be some who know what's happening, or at least think they do. And this is the, the weekend before Passover, so there are getting, you are having a lot more people in. This is, this is the area. festival of Passover that we're talking about, that's correct, which draws in a tremendous number of people, which we'll talk about later, okay? And they're there for the religion, for Passover itself, but there's also, like, if they came from Galilee, they're hotbeds. They're, they really want to get rid of Romans. Okay, they really want to fight. Uh, they want the Romans gone. They don't want to have to fight them to do and it. Jesus is from the area of Galilee. Correct. So they know of him. So it's, there's a lot of factors coming together here. Okay. They spread their coats on the road, etc., and branches from the fields. Luke 19, 35 through 38. And they brought, oh, the case of Lord has needed, and they brought it to Jesus, and throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. Stop. Who, who threw the cloaks this, on? This would have been the disciples. Thank you. Go ahead. And as he rode along, they spread their cloaks on the road. They. Who is the they? Well, we're still, it sounds like it's the disciples. Thank you. Yes, it does. Go ahead. As he was drawing near, already on the way down the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. All right. To Luke, what do you see? Who's making all the noise? The disciples and the other group that's following along. There is no other group here yet. The whole crowd the whole of disciples. Of disciples. They're all disciples at this point. Yeah, but it's more than the twelve. They're all of his disciples. That's what I, I okay. yes. Yeah. It's his disciples that are announcing to everybody in Jerusalem, here he comes. Okay? In this initial phase as they're approaching Jerusalem. Okay? While some are in there calling the people out of Jerusalem. His disciples are taking him into Jerusalem on a donkey, and they're putting their cloaks in front and, and, and leaves from the, the local trees, and they're proclaiming out loud, here's the Messiah. Okay? Any questions, thoughts, or comments? Well, That's Luke's perspective. This is the first time in these scriptures we've seen them threw their cloaks on the colt. Yes. But that would probably be not unexpected in that you always put something between your butt and the skin of the animal. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. You know, protect the animal a little bit. And protect you from the yeah. smell. Yes, you're right. So, anything else? Do you see what's happening so far? So far, this is a big PR campaign. Mm -hmm. According to Luke. Yeah. Okay. Mark says that there were others, the crowds, right? You know, or it seems to be there are others somewhere around there. Maybe. Anyway. Well, you could infer that from Luke as well, that, you know, these people come through making these announcements. People are going to come see what it's about. Correct. And that's what's going to happen. Jesus is being announced as king. He's being proclaimed by his disciples. Okay. 
Okay, Matthew 21, 6 through 9. Okay. Beginning with chapter 6, the disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him, yeah, the crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna, the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Okay, so for Matthew, it's the crowds, not the disciples. Luke is the only one that specifies that the disciples were doing this initially. Now the crowds are involved. The people are coming out of Jerusalem to meet him, in my opinion, if you bring the text together. Any questions, thoughts, or comments? Well, it just, uh, it seems to me that this is a very successful uh, public relations deal. Yes, it was. Uh, but the Romans haven't gotten word about it yet, nor have we seen yet the chief priests and scribes. <laughs> you, you're right. This is the beginning of the campaign. Well, this is after his years of ministry. This is the campaign that is designed to bring them to a decision to follow the Spirit and follow the Lord, which they won't do, but that's another thing. So let me put it in my words. Some of the disciples put their cloaks on the donkey for Jesus to sit on. Then Jesus rode the donkey toward the city of Jerusalem with his followers around and behind him. In this way, Jesus was announced as a king, like Solomon, the son of David, and that he came in peace. So here that is for you. 1 Kings 1, 32 and 33 reads, Then King David said, Call me Zadok the priest, and Nathan the prophet, and Benadi, and the son of Jehoadina, whatever. And they came into the king's presence. The king said to them, Take with you the servants of your Lord, and have my son Solomon ride on my own mule, and bring him down to Gihon. Gion is the spring just off the east side of Jerusalem. That's the water source. The king was not brought in on a horse. The king was announced on a donkey. That announces them as king. Not a humble, necessarily, thing. Solomon was not being brought in a humble way, except that he was being announced as king on a mule or donkey. Questions, thoughts, comments? I uh, had not noticed the mule side of this before, which for anyone who wouldn't know, that's half a donkey. That's, right? that's not a real whole donkey, you're right. <laughs> but, but, but still, uh, They're beasts of burden that yeah. people use on a regular basis. Yeah. But a donkey will not reproduce. Yeah. Yeah. But the, uh, a mule will. Yeah. Right. Right. But, but we also know that in particular, mules are known to be exceedingly strong and real efficient yes. with the amount of food they eat. Yeah, they're very good at that. Okay. And there are others. Yeah, okay. Anything else? It's, what's important is, is this announcement of Jesus as king. By coming down into Jerusalem the way he was coming, from the east into Jerusalem. That's where the Gion Spring is, right down there. Okay, let's go to the book. As he approached the bridge, this is today, across the Kidron Valley, pilgrims came out of the city led by some of Jesus' followers. The road Jesus has been on is this one coming up this way. Now he comes over the bridge, over the Gion Valley, and he comes over the bridge, to come into Jerusalem itself. That's modern. Big white one. So was there a bridge in those days? Yeah. There must have been. There must have been. And they didn't have cars and stuff. And they didn't have a church there. But they came across a bridge to get across this valley 
here, which would otherwise be flooded a lot of times in, in the seasons and such. They had a bridge there. So as Jesus now is coming across that bridge, the people are coming out of Jerusalem. And the disciples are going in. And all of a sudden, all of this comes together. And people could get excited. Question, thought, or comment? The disciples began to shout, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, to indicate that Jesus was a messenger sent to Jerusalem by God. There is a purpose for his coming to Jerusalem, which we'll talk about later. It is not to die. That's not the purpose that he had. The purpose was to get the Jewish leaders to change their ways, if they would. Psalm 118, verse 26 reads, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The crowd picked up the chant, Save us now! That's what Hosanna means. They shouted as a prayer to God. Then some people laid fresh cut palm branches, tree branches on the roadway, and others placed some cloaks down as a sign of respect. Okay. Now we've got the disciples, we've got the crowds, everybody's into it. That's in that general area. Hosanna. Save us now. Let this be the Messiah. Save us from these Romans. And we always need to remember that his very name, Yeshua, Yeshua. means the Lord saves. Yep. Or Yahweh saves. Yahweh. Yeah. Okay, any thoughts, questions, comments? It must be a sleepy day. <laughs> Well, I mean, it would have been interesting to be there. I oh think. yeah! But uh, of course, I couldn't understand the language. Well, <laughs> yeah. it wasn't in English, which is terribly disappointing. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I mean, it is an exciting time in history, and it was no doubt an exciting time for those people yeah. there, then and there. Oh yeah. It's such a proud yeah. people. Then some people led for, oops, sorry, I got that. Okay. And thus Jesus, anointed like Yehu, which we'll talk about, the evening before, by Mary, was proclaimed God's chosen one as he rode his donkey into Jerusalem as the anointed king. Okay. Now, who's Yehu? 2 Kings 9, 12b to 13 reads, Thus says the Lord, I have anointed you king over Israel. Then they hurried, and each man took his garment and placed it under him on the bare steps and blew the trumpet, saying, Yehu is king. There are the garments being put down underneath him. Okay. So we have these pieces of culture. We're pulling them all together. Okay. But how would he be received? And that's the real question here. Matthew 21, 10 and 11. Starting with 10? Yes. He entered Jerusalem. The whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Okay, there you go. So now we know he's being, everybody's finding out for sure who his name is, what he's about, all this kind of stuff. Okay, anything else? Luke 19, 39 to 40. And some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones would cry out. Okay. So now we have the religious leaders. They finally come into the picture. Thank you, Luke. Okay. And they say, tell them to shut up. We don't want the Romans coming in here. Yeah. They don't say it that way yet, okay? But they want him to shut up because it's causing furor, chaos, okay? Jesus entered the temple complex through the eastern gate to see what kind of response he might get. Would the leaders openly, honestly, and sincerely listen to God's calling? 
Would the Jews of Judah listen? Would many of the pilgrims listen? What Jesus found was that most people went about doing their business. Jesus knew he would have to wake them up. The religious leaders were shaken by the sudden and bold entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. His followers should be silent, thought the religious leaders. If the crowd is stirred up, the Romans will get nervous, and then the Romans might take away our hard-earned religious freedoms. As you said, shut up, Shh. don't make waves, or we will have to deal with other stuff. The Romans always are upset when you, when you start hearing stuff like this go on. Well, they're afraid of rioting. Sure. All leaders, hmm, all people in power get nervous when people underneath them or around them start making waves. Not all, but generally speaking, that's the rule. Okay? So the religious leaders are going to be called to make a decision. Now they're going, whoa, we got a problem. We're going to have to deal with that problem. Question, thought, or comment? But the disciples were not silent. And the crowd of pilgrims did get caught up in the excitement. The crowd thinks that he is the messenger of God coming to fulfill the prophecy of Malachi. And Malachi 3, 1 through 4 reads, Behold, I am going to send my messenger, and he will clear the way before me. And the Lord, whom you seek, will suddenly come to his temple. And the messenger of the covenant, in whom you delight, behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. Maybe chills. Maybe chills. <laughs> He's going to come on you suddenly, and this is what Jesus is doing. He's suddenly coming into the temple and declaring himself a king, letting the people around him declare him king. Well, and I find it interesting because it sounds like they're saying that he fulfills what John the Baptist was there to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then later comes the Lord. Well, we know how that works. <laughs> yeah. So, anything else? Here we go then. This could be a dangerous situation, they thought. This prophet from Nazareth should be stopped. They're making a decision. Any questions, thought, or comments? We call it Palm Sunday. The next time when we get together, oh, let's finish Mark 11. Okay. Jesus entered Jerusalem and came into the temple. And after looking around at everything, he left for Bethany with the twelve, since it was already late. He came in, went into the temple suddenly. All the crowds were yelling. Many people were yelling, this is the Messiah. He comes in, he looks around, turns and walks back to Bethany. But John finishes this off. These things his disciples did not understand at the first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things were written of him and that they had done these things to him. Question, thought, or comment? They still don't understand. They've been with him two and a half years, and they still don't understand. Just like sometimes we don't. But it was late in the day, so Jesus left the temple, left Jerusalem, went back to Bethany for the night. Tomorrow, he would confront the nation of Israel with the call of God. But now, yeah. in Luke, I don't know if you're going to touch on this next time, it says, and when he drew near and saw the city, he wept over it. That will be next time. Okay. Yes, you're That's very good. So, next time he's got to come in Jerusalem and there'll be the cleansing of the temple. Mm 